Before Muhammad Ali Jr. became the poster child of cocky Chad in the Bakiverse, that title arguably belonged to the arrogant karate prodigy that is Katsumi Orochi. The adopted son of karate grandmaster Dopo Orochi is a lot of things, but a sound barrier breaking freak of nature, that's something even Dopo didn't predict he could become, because of Katsumi's attitude towards his training. Besides Baki Hanma, Katsumi Orochi might be the only other martial arts prodigy with the ability to lay claim to being one of the strongest men alive. His natural talent for fighting earned him the nickname Lethal Weapon, and he has taken out opponents most of us would piss our pants just looking at, including a literal yeti. He didn't realize his full anatomical potential until he was forced to admit his shortcomings as a fighter, but once he did, boy oh boy did he surprise everyone who watches Baki. So what makes Katsumi Orochi's body so special? Well, let's answer that. This is Katsumi Orochi's anatomy, Explore. The Dick Grayson of the Orochi family. How Katsumi was destined for greatness since a young age. One of the greatest comic book characters in history is Dick Grayson, better known these days as Nightwing, but largely remembered for being the first Robin that Batman ever had. Grayson's origin story is so iconic that DC basically copy-pasted it for their next Robin, Jason Todd, but what makes him relevant to our video is the fact that his background and Katsumi Orochi's background are practically the same. As a child, Katsumi was part of a circus where he worked with his parents. His dad performed an act with lions and Katsumi was a trapeze wonder kid. He was pulling out all kinds of insane stunts with little to no safety at the age of five, something that was noticed by karate grandmaster and circus attendee Dopo Orochi as well. However, at that same circus act where Dopo first saw Katsumi, he also ended up adopting him because the lions went berserk for some reason and killed his biological father. Katsumi's biological mother, being a broke circus artist, agreed to Dopo's proposal of adopting Katsumi as his own son. Despite this, Katsumi has never held a grudge against her. In the lead up to the fight that is the reason we're making this video, an adult Katsumi is reunited with his birth mother, and instead of hating her for abandoning him at such a young age, he tells her that he's got four parents, and he loves them all equally. That's a much lighter way of looking at things than anything anyone associated with the Bat family would ever even think of, and rightfully so, because the child prodigy trapeze artist that gets adopted by the man who knows martial arts is about where the similarities between Katsumi Orochi and Dick Grayson end. As the adopted son of one of the greatest karate fighters in Baki history, Katsumi grows up as a prodigious talent in karate himself. He develops an arrogance that is rightfully earned because he has trained his body to the point where he is called lethal weapon by those who know of him. By the time Netflix's Baki comes around, Katsumi is the new leader of the Shinshin Kai Dojo, given that his dad quits after being defeated by Yujiro Hanma. And if you've only seen that series and its successor, Baki Hanma, then what we said in the intro might make a ton of sense to you. Katsumi Oro she comes off as a goofball that no one takes seriously in Baki, except Retsu Kaio and Hector Doyle maybe, but both of those come after hard-fought victories over them for Katsumi, and it's a true disservice to his character. Because even before the world knew about Katsumi Orochi through Netflix's Baki, it knew his potential was Baki level thanks to some of the things he accomplished in 2001's Baki the Grappler series. Katsumi was already incredibly nimble and strong. His youth was evidence of that, as he spent several years training with his father and other martial artists, fighting in contests both honorable and dishonorable, Katsumi Orochi became powerful enough to replicate a feat that's usually only reserved for aircraft. But even without that, he was a killer, to say the least. His limbs are fast, accurate, and strong enough to take down a yeti. How Katsumi Orochi defeated Yashizaru Jr. Even before we saw him take on some of the world's most dangerous convicts, Katsumi Orochi had solidified himself as a force to be reckoned with all the way back during the Grappler Baki days. He debuts as a back alley badass, putting the beat down on some thugs that molested one of his associates and pulling out one of their front teeth with nothing but finger force. Yeah, we, we know how that sounds, so let's just move swiftly onward. Katsumi was a well-intentioned yet obnoxious character initially, but the more we see him fight, the more we seem to realize that he can actually back up the claims he makes about himself. Katsumi Orochi is a physical specimen from an anatomical perspective. He stands at 6 foot 1, well above the height of the average Japanese male, and comfortably taller than series protagonist Baki himself. His hair went through a few alterations before achieving its current slick-backed perfection, but those thick-set eyebrows were always there. That doesn't matter though, because what matters is the fact that from face down, he's a physical beast that deserves his nickname. Katsumi 
Kyo Orochi is built out the gills and has trained his body to the point that it has become a living weapon, which is the creed espoused by his adopted father, Topo Orochi. He weighs well over 100 kilos and yet he can support his entire body weight on nothing but the tips of his thumbs. Not only that, Katsumi can take multiple laps around the Shinshin Kai Dojo in that stance, which is something most Shinshin Kai students find near impossible to do. Dopo's adopted son is also so well trained in the art of karate that he can hit all four and five vital points along his opponent's vertical spinal column line with blinding speed. But what really makes him stand out are his endurance and his special maneuver. There are two prime examples of this in the Grappler Baki series, his fights against Yasha Zaru Jr. and Keoru Haniyama. Up until he comes across these two, Katsumi was using more basic karate techniques like the Seiken punches, the Ippon knuckle punches, headbutts, and the like. Coming from a prodigious fighter like him, of course the effect of these basic techniques was brutal, and when someone can defeat an opponent using nothing but basic techniques, you know they're strong as hell. What puts Katsumi Orochi over that threshold are the two things we mentioned earlier, and both of them are on full display during his fights with Baki's Yeti and Human Triceratops. Yasha Zaru Jr. is a massive 6 foot 6 ape man who possesses the raw strength to break out of a steel cage built especially to confine him. Well, more specifically built to confine his dad, but Yasha Zaru Sr. met an unfortunate accident in the woods by the name of Yujiro Hanma, which led Jr. to the underground arena in search of revenge. Yasha Zaru Jr. pummels one of the fighters in the lobby before making short, brutal work of Katsumi's friend, Kiyosumi Kato. Kato was one of Shinshin Kai's most promising students before he turned to a life of crime in search of real fights with no rules to hold the participants back. He thought he was ready to take on Baki, but he could barely stand up against Yasha Zaru Jr., who tossed him through walls and ragdolled him, well, like a ragdoll. Katsumi, upon seeing the true threat to Kato's life, steps in and blitzes Yasha Zaru Jr. before knocking him out with an axe kick. He accomplished what Kato couldn't in the blink of an eye comparatively, and then went on to defeat one of the strongest fighters in the entire series, at least from a brute strength perspective. A karate ka defeats a human dinosaur using physics. What is Katsumi Orochi's mock punch, and why is it impossible for an average human? Keoru Hanayama has been compared to many things. The most recent thing he was compared to was a Triceratops by a prehistoric man who used to fight and eat those things back in his day. We'll get to that man in a few minutes, but the comparison between Hanayama and a Triceratops isn't actually far off. Hanayama is built like an ox and is one of the out-and-out -out most powerful characters in the series, likely third place behind Yujiro Hanma and Biscuit Oliva in terms of pure brute strength. His grip strength alone is legendary, and he can rip apart decks of cards by doing nothing more than pinching them. His punches contain the force of boulders, so if he ever lands a punch on you or gets you in his infamous vice grip, it's usually game over. Katsumi Orochi started thinking that way when his median line attacks and nothing else seemed to work on this bull of a man. He tried to cut off Hanayama's punches using the scissor kicks, but was unable to stop them fully. He tried running away from Hanayama to recover enough from his injuries, but realized his body would either shut down or be torn apart by Hanayama's vice grip when he got caught. The only thing that kept him from losing his fighting spirit completely was the fact that his Shinshin Kai compeers, Kato and Sudo, started performing Seiken punches to keep Katsumi alive and in the match. Once he recovered his faculties, Katsumi unleashed the technique that truly portrays him as a lethal weapon, the mock punch. The mechanics of this technique are why we call Katsumi Oro an anatomical freak, because while withstanding pressures that would be comparable to a hydraulic press right on his nerves is admittedly impressive, his control over his own body is even more so. The mock punch, as its name suggests, is a move that's so fast it breaks the sound barrier. The way it works is by combining real-world logic and Baki logic, because obviously achieving such a feat with a regular human body is quite impossible. For one thing, even approaching the speed of sound would require you to throw a punch so fast and forceful it would end up dislocating your joints. For another, if you manage to accomplish it by some miracle, your hands will end up being mangled by it because of the pressure and force generated by such a feat. But Baki logic states that hands and feet are made out of steel, and human brain boxes are probably nuclear bunkers the way some of these characters keep getting dumped on their heads. So you know, the logic works out. Katsumi's mock punch isn't exactly a mock punch because it doesn't exactly approach mock speed. 
This is because his punches are described early on as being at the speed of sound, which is probably why contact with his mock punch produces a sonic boom type effect on his opponent's body. Now, usually we think that throwing a punch has a lot to do with strength when it's actually a lot more technical. Professional boxers will tell you that technique matters just as much as raw strength in a fight because strength will only get you so far, but technique will allow you to break those limitations and transcend. One of the greatest fights in boxing history was the fight between Muhammad Ali and George Foreman. Foreman was the hardest hitter in the game at the time, even Ali admitted it, but he was able to defeat George Foreman by ducking and weaving through his devastating punches and landing offensive flurries that utilized the full range of motion of his body. A punch isn't necessarily thrown by a fist. It actually comes from the neck and shoulder joints and how well you manage to leverage them when you initiate a punching range of motion. The movement of this joint is what facilitates firing power, and Katsumi Orochi has mastered this movement on an instinctual level. According to Baki logic, a usual fast punch involves about 10 joints, starting from the big toe and ending with the fingers of the fist involved. He adds the rotational movement of the spinal column to this, bringing the total number of joints involved in his mock punch to a staggering 27, which allows his hand to move faster than the speed of sound. Now, there is a major logical fallacy in Baki where in the manga, Katsumi claims that as sound travels at the speed of 1 mile per 5 seconds, he needed to achieve a speed of 65 miles per minute to break the sound barrier, which is far more than would be required. Sound travels at about 12.5 miles per minute, and Katsumi states that only a punch five times faster than that can be called a mock punch. The truth is, even a difference as small as 11 miles an hour can enable what we call mock speed, as under standard weather and temperature conditions, the speed of sound is 750 miles per hour at sea level, and Mach 1 is achieved at 761 miles per hour. 65 miles per minute is far faster than that, at least by our calculations, and would turn any kind of non-reinforced structure into a mushy pile of bones and muscles and blood vessels galore. So clearly, unless Katsumi has a hand made out of titanium, the figures stated in the manga simply don't add up, although we suppose at this point that's a baseline for a fighter's anatomy in Baki. Anyway, let's wrap up this small physics lesson by telling you guys the result of such a feat. Before Katsumi used the mock punch, he was being slapped around by Hanayama and beaten to within an inch of his life. He started off the fight with his usual air of arrogance, but gradually acknowledged his own strengths and weaknesses, and thanks to Kato and Suedo regained his fighting spirit at the opportune moment. Once he used the mock punch, the outcome was pretty much decided. Hanayama knew he wasn't going to be able to continue fighting after taking the first one, so he decided to fight for his pride instead, as he took every subsequent mock punch and ended up passing out from the pain while standing. For context, Hanayama has his face blown up in the first couple of episodes of Baki 2018, and he brushes it off like an annoying gnat. Managing to bring him to such a shocking standstill is all down to the incredible anatomy of Katsumi Orochi and his awareness that he was able to exploit it to its fullest. But if this seems impressive to you guys, well, there's a reason Baki fans didn't get on the Katsumi train until the pickle arc, and sadly it isn't his anatomy, though that does end up winning fans over in the end. Surpassing the limits of humanity, how Katsumi Orochi multiplied his joints to achieve true mock speed, and how it broke his body. In Baki 2018, Katsumi Orochi is presented as pretty much the same character, except with the arrogance turned into a sort of goofy self-confidence. He believes he can take on anybody, and that is what ends up becoming fuel for the fire that allows him to surpass the limits of human anatomy. See, during the world's most dangerous convicts arc, Katsumi puts on some inhuman display displays of endurance. He survives being burned alive twice, one time via explosion. He can tank eye gouges, splintered pieces of wood to the neck, and pretty much anything that would kill a regular human except maybe bullets. He beats one of the strongest criminals in the world, Hector Doyle, into friendship. And he also fights Retsu Kaio to a draw in better condition than when he lost to the guy during the maximum tournament considering it happened right after Katsumi's fight with Hanayama. Katsumi grows into a more respectful, more charismatic, and more impatient patient character as time progresses, because as Yuji Rohanma points out during the meetup in Pickle's Tokyo Cell, no one wants to fight Katsumi seriously. Despite being one of the best fighters in the Bakiverse, Katsumi has never been actively sought out for a challenge, unlike Baki, Yujiro, or even Pickle himself. This is because Katsumi, while extremely talented in his own right, does not possess the kind of resolve it needs to emerge from a situation as the sole victor. When Katsumi is surrounded by people he trusts, he tends to depend on their help to resolve situations 
positions instead of leading with his own strength. And despite supposedly being a mirror to Baki, Katsumi has never actually had a conclusive fight with him. Even Baki thinks that Katsumi is more talk than walk, because right before his fight with Pickle, Baki taunts Katsumi for thinking he could even take on Pickle after he ate Retsu's leg and part of his shoulder. But this isn't the same hot-headed, arrogant Katsumi Orochi that we'd seen and have been talking about all this time. See, Yujiro's claim gives Katsumi a much-needed reality check. He challenges Pickle as a way to shut other people up, sure, but it's mostly a way to reassure himself of his own strength for Katsumi. Yujiro's words make him realize that he isn't a finisher in a real fight. He's a support act at best, especially when it comes to elites like the ones we constantly see in Baki. So, in order to overcome this adversity, Katsumi reverts to training and ends up developing the very thing that landed him this anatomy video. As Katsumi discusses his mock punch with Retsu, who helps him improve it slightly by highlighting the fact that the blow could be further strengthened by leveraging the movement of his head, he is interrupted by Kaio Kaku, one of the best fighters in the Bakiverse. This is a guy that's 146 years old and has dedicated at least 100 of those years to the practice of Chinese Kenpo. If you want to know how he's still alive, then check out his anatomy video on our channel because it's a doozy of a story. But the thing most relevant to this video is Kaku's immense knowledge of martial arts techniques. He demonstrates to Katsumi a strike that is so fast and precise, it cuts open an egg, which is completely impossible to achieve. We think so, and so did Katsumi, but Kaku Kaio Kaku explains that the key to such strength isn't in what's real, but in what isn't. Though Kaku only used his lower arm to bisect the hanging egg, he imagined that he had dozens upon dozens of joints in his lower arm, which, according to Baki logic, ended up amping up his strike speed, precision, and impact extraordinarily. It is extremely anime of Kaio Kaku to ask Katsumi to visualize more bones in his body than there actually are, but the son of a gun must know something we don't, because it ends up working out. In a conversation with Retsu regarding the inner workings of a mock punch, Katsumi uses a whip to demonstrate what a sonic boom is. Basically, whenever an object approaches speeds that go beyond the sound barrier, it causes a massive booming sound to be produced, which occurs when a whip is lashed in the open air. Thanks to the movement of the leash, when the tip reaches its maximum expansion point, it collides with the air at speeds that exceed the speed of sound, thus producing that iconic whipping sound. The same principle applies to fighter jets, rockets, and basically anything that breaks the sound barrier, including Katsumi's fists. In the demonstration we spoke of earlier, Katsumi showed Retsu his mock punch, and it not only caused a booming sound to occur, it also showed Katsumi's hand heating up, which is what would actually happen if your fist approached the speed of sound. He then spent long hours trying to visualize the joints in his body, and then image training his brain into accepting the idea that it had hundreds of joints that didn't exist before, when the fact is that they still don't. Seriously, every part of Katsumi's anatomy looks like a compressed spinal column that somehow has more vertebral bones in it than there are in a fish. What this allows him to achieve is quite remarkable, as once he perfects the imaging of countless joints composing his body, he lets go of a punch that actually approaches supersonic speed and shatters all the windows in the room he was training in. It was so loud that everyone in the building thought a bomb had gone off which is usually what it feels like when any jet that can approach mock speed approaches mock speed. By using his imagination, Katsumi turns his limbs into the knotted whip he used to show Retsu a sonic boom, and it works to great effect against Pickle. Before Katsumi fought him using his new technique, no one had been able to make Pickle budge from his stance, let alone give him a solid pushback. Even Jack Hanma, who is one of the strongest characters in the series, was shocked that his patent uppercut didn't even break a tooth in Pickle's jaw, let alone give him the conclusion concussion Jack was hoping for. Katsumi managed to send Pickle, who weighed twice as much as him and had at least a foot and a half on him in height, flying into the stadium air with nothing but a single punch. That's thanks to his improved technique, which utilizes every joint Katsumi can imagine up and can also be truly called a mock punch. Using his hands and feet in rapid succession, Katsumi Orochi lands critical hits on Pickle's vital points, and each of those use his new countless joints technique, mind you. Yes, he manages to shake up Pickle's body and heart with his indomitable fighting spirit, but his own body becomes wrecked beyond use because of it. Katsumi's wrists and feet are left completely mangled by these super mock strikes because, of course they are. The fastest fighter jets in our world can approach speeds of up to Mach 2.5, and the people who fly those jets require special equipment and training just to be able to survive within them. It's said the human body would be completely demolished by speeds that approach Mach 10, so we think that the general idea of Katsumi's punch approaching Mach 78 propagated by the wiki fandom, isn't exactly accurate. 
That's a speed that would crumble the entire stadium Pickle and Katsumi were fighting in, and the latter would never do that to his 55,000 students, all of whom had shown up to support him. Katsumi knew his flurry of attacks was the last proper chance he would get at Pickle, but encouragement from his entire Shinshin Kai family spurred him onward to hit one last mock punch, which ended up blowing out his entire right forearm. All that was left of it was bone and tendon, and it felt like Pickle was going to mercy kill Katsumi by taking that very arm off. But then, he prayed to the arm, and gave it back to Katsumi, who now, despite being a one-handed fighter, is far more respected by everyone in the Bakiverse and outside of it. Katsumi Orochi proved that the only limitations to the human anatomy are the ones we impose upon ourselves. And while it isn't practically feasible to increase the number of joints one has, he isn't far off the mark. He had to overcome his own arrogance to unlock this new level of anatomical dominance, and that isn't even the craziest part in all this. He gets the Naruto treatment from a tragic source. Does Katsumi get his hand back in the Baki manga? Spoiler alert for those of you who haven't read the manga, but the short answer is, yes, he does. After Retsu Kaio is killed by a reanimated Miyamoto Mushashi, sorry Retsu fans, Katsumi undergoes a procedure quite similar to the one his dad goes through in Baki 2018's first season, where he gets his wrist reattached to his arm, nerve by nerve. Instead of getting his own arm though, Katsumi gets Retsu's arm attached to his body, which boosts his fighting skills beyond what we've just established. With Retsu's arm a part of his anatomy, Katsumi can perform many of Retsu's Retsu's moves, as if the hand never forgot its training. He can even replicate Retsu's stance perfectly, and indeed, it feels like Retsu is possessing him somehow as Katsumi's demeanor changes when he uses Retsu's techniques. But the most insane development in his anatomy is the fact that he no longer needs to sacrifice his limbs to perform his strongest technique. In his fight with Pickle though, Katsumi was able to get the prehistoric man on his back by going well beyond the speed of sound. The issue wasn't really his fist making contact with Pickle's body, because they'd have started getting shredded before that happened. However, following God only knows what kind of training regimen, Katsumi became powerful enough to negate that effect on his arms and legs and essentially spam their usage as incredibly strong, sound-breaking whips. Taking him on now versus taking on the man we spoke of at the start of the video would have a difference of night and day in our opinion, and all of it is down to Katsumi's hard-headedness, morals, values, and most of all, his freakish anatomy. Marvelous Verdict Unfortunately, that's all we've got for you guys on this one. Do you think Katsumi Orochi is one of the best sleeper hit characters of the Bakiverse? Let us know your opinion in the comments section down below, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed our content. Thanks for watching, stay safe out there, and have a marvelous day.